Hello YouTube. Welcome back to not my messy desk, but my clean bed. Because we all know the best PC technicians build on their anti-static bed. Right? Cool. So you might remember the case that I'm going to use on this build. It's a DIY PC Solo T1R. Ooh, beautiful. Um, I think we will start with that, but first I will go over all the parts that I have. Um, so the motherboard, as you might remember from another video, is the Asus A7NBX, or 8X, BX, I think it's BX. And it's got an Athlon 2100 Plus in it right now. Came with the board off eBay. Uh, and that, uh, this board has an AGP Pro slot on it, so it has extra, extra pins, mostly for power and stuff like that, but, uh, I figured since I happened to pick this particular board up, that I would go with an AGP Pro graphics card, and the AGP Pro graphics cards that are out there pretty much all workstation cards. Um, also, Apple used them on their computers a lot uh, with some extra gibbons. But this is a Fire GL X1, which is basically a Radeon 9700, uh, but it has 256 megabytes of RAM instead of the 128 that the uh, 9700 came with. Um, obviously, it's a dual slot card. Um, it's got an extra plug here for something. I don't know what this is supposed to go to. I don't know. Power supply. So, I learned from Phil's Computer Lab that some modern power supplies don't put enough uh, amps out on the 5 volt rail. Um, in some cases they were only putting out like 16 or yeah 16 or 18 or something and I'm hoping that 24 amps is going to be enough. So this is an Antec <coughs> NeoPower 650 and it puts out 24 amps on the 5 volt rail which seems like it should be enough for me. Uh, I don't know yet. We'll, we'll just have to see. I'm assuming this power supply works. It's actually modular, um, and I would have used it in my main computer when I got this power supply. I got it free from a friend, except uh, I need more than, si or well, I probably don't need more than 650 watts, but mine's more than 650 watts. <laughs> so uh, hopefully I've got enough regular Molex. Looks like I've got a whole slew of those. And some SATA power that I can delete from this because this board does not have SATA. It's not the uh, deluxe edition, I believe, is what it was. So, yeah, I can I can take off a couple of these probably. That's all SATA. This is all SATA. Yep. And I'll have slightly better cable management. Hooray! Speaking of cables. I just realized I have to find an IDE cable, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So let's uh, open up the case and see what it comes with it. And FYI, I'm running a DSLR and I'm on manual focus right now, so pardon any focusing problems that I'm having here. Um, case, once a, it's a DIY PC branded case. It was just, it was cheap. It was like 25 bucks or something stupid like that. And it doesn't look half bad. It's, you know, not the most pleasing case in the world, but it has some color to it, and it's not too offensive. Back fan's red. Oh boy. So let's uh, take off these thumb screws, set them somewhere where I will totally lose them, and see what we got inside. This case actually has a USB 3 header on the top, which is kind of cool for not this build. <laughs> Uh, we've got our front panel connections, of course, two, oh, we've got a USB and a audio, a 
nice little uh, pack of thumb screws, or not thumb screws, regular screws. Uh, a few risers. And the rest of the screws and some plastic thing that probably does something important. I don't know. About what you'd expect for a cheap case. Bag full of screws. All right. So let's go ahead and put the motherboard in, I guess, for now. Oh, right. I forgot. The cooler. This is a cool thing, too. So I couldn't, for the life of me, remember what... Uh, model of, of cooler this is. Heat sink combo, heat sink fan. Um, ignoring the plastic part. It's an all aluminum thermal take. Big hefty thing. Um, can't remember if, the, I don't think this is the original fan that came with it. I actually got this uh, heat sink at a garage sale of all places. Um, but I have this Extra thick 90 millimeter. Is that a 90? That's an 80. 80 millimeter thermal take fan, which comes with a fan speed controller, which goes in your three and a half inch uh, bay, which I do not have one of, unless, unless, nope. So I'm going to have to get an adapter, a black. Uh, adapter so I can mount that fan speed controller. I don't really need the fan speed controller at all, but I'd like to be able to dial it in. I think in the past I had just left that floating in the bottom of the case and kind of got it to right, right before it was about to get loud and then just left it there. Um, right. The weird duct thing, which is dusty as hell. Um, it was theorized at the time that if you could get the fan away from the heat sink without bumping into other stuff, that you could, the, the air would have more time to be uh, less turbulent and go directly into the fins. And so they thought, oh, well, we'll just make this little adapter, which I believe is also thermal take. Nope, it is duct mod, ducting mod. Nope, it is thermal take. Thermal take ducting mod. So it's a very rare part by now. Uh, so your, your air has a little bit more room to uh, straighten out and get into the fins of the fan, fins of the heatsink, uh, theoretically. I don't remember if it made much of a difference. I remember I was watching my temperatures a lot back in the day. I had all sorts of, of uh, I think I even had a temperature front plate thing with an LCD screen and all that jazz because that was the cool thing back in the day was all these random accessories that make your computer look like well, ridiculous um, which is kind of what I'm going for on this one so I'm going to definitely find five and a quarter to three and a half inch adapter so I can plug that on there anyway I'm going to put the uh, motherboard in and I will probably speed up that footage and throw some music on it or something because that's boring as hell. Or I might just skip it all together. Who knows? I'm going to get the motherboard in. And while I'm thinking of it, uh, one of the reasons I chose this case is because I needed a, would it be a full ATX? Not full ATX, just a regular ATX. Most of the cheap cases out there are just for micro ATX, and so it wouldn't fit this ATX standard board. I think full ATX has a little bit extra on it. Is that right? I think that's right. Um, and also the number of slots that I needed was uh, the main contributing factor, because a mini ATX or micro ATX is going to be, you know, much shorter. It's going to delete some of these, and yeah. So I needed to find a board or a case that would actually fit this board, which wasn't too difficult, obviously. So where did I put that bag of screws, eh? Hmm. All right, whatever, that's good enough for me. <laughs> it's in there. So now we're gonna need thermal paste. I gotta clean the heat sink, the old heat sink. Um, we'll slap that on there. I probably don't even need to add the fan for now, just for testing, because that's all the farther I'm going to get on this day. 
Um, I might throw the hard drive in there, but gotta go find the cable. I know I've got them in that box somewhere. Um, so we can at least check if the video card works, if the power supply is going to give us enough power to boot, uh, which should be fine. Um, and next time I guess we'll run benchmarks and stuff like that. I gotta get Windows installed too. Ah, that's gonna be fun. <coughs> Pardon my gravelly voice, that's just kind of how it is these days. So, let's get some heat sinks cleaned, or a heat sink clean. Now, my trusty method of doing this is probably just going to be some alcohol, get it all over the bed, and a toothbrush. You can get those fins cleaner than they were. They weren't really caked up. Uh, there wasn't really any gunk in them. They just had a small film of stuff on there. And while I'm at it, I can clean the inside and outside of... There's some tape on here. Ooh, that's... I don't remember why there's tape on there. Because I didn't screw the fan in. Because I didn't have screws long enough to put this fan in, so I ended up taping it on there. I wonder if we'll have to do the same this time. Probably. Clean off the old thermal paste. I actually lapped this at my parents' house back in the day. Um, it's going to require a little more. I lapped it on the bench buffing wheel in my dad's shop. So it's a little shinier than normal. Um, just wipe that on our pants. That should be good to go. Try and get rid of some of this tape residue and the gunk on here. Sorry, you're probably bored out of your mind, aren't you? We're going to call that good. Now about thermal paste. Hmm, where did I put that? Now I've got some Arctic Silver. It's in the basement right now. Probably in my brother's desk drawer because he was the last one to build, do any PC building. Uh, but today I'm just going to use this Thermal Right. It's kind of old. Should be still good. Um, because I plan on removing this 2100 plus Athlon, putting in a 3200. Uh, this is a Thunderbird core, and the 3200 is a Barton core. Barton core? I think that's right. Uh, not positive that 3200 works, but if it does, it'll stay in there, and I want to throw the slightly more expensive Arctic Silver onto it instead of this one. That's a bit too much thermal paste for my liking. I'm going to scrape a little bit off. Don't you miss the days when putting on a heat sink just required some clips? Maybe they've reverted back to that more these days, but... And as I say that, I'm having trouble getting it on the first clips. Oh boy! And I immediately get it as soon as I turn the camera off. Side. Flip side of the clips. There's still some gunk on there. There we go. Alright, so we've got enough cooling to boot. Um, what do we want to do next? Do we want to do the power supply? Mm, might say that's for last. To do the RAM and we gotta do the video card which will require me to remove this sticker right here so let's get that rolling so the RAM well first off here is the board that I was going to use my old trusty NF7 
from ABIT actually replaced the noisy little fan on there with a proper heat sink and a custom aluminum clip that's screwed in. Uh, but unfortunately it suffered some damage in transit or in storage and this corner is cracked. So it's toast. Um, and that's the 3200. Or no, that's not a 3200. I just had to correct myself in a video earlier. Uh, this is a 2500, but it's still Barton Core. Um, but it will easily overclock to 3200 plus rating. I don't remember what the gigahertz is for that. Um, pretty much every 2500 would do that, would over overclock to 3200. This one I know did because that's how I ran it. <coughs> Um, I've got two hundred, two five hundred and twelve meg sticks of DDR RAM from OCZ, which I will be taking. And this should be plenty of RAM for me, um, and I should probably look up which DIMM slots to use for dual channel because I can do dual channel on this. So let me do that first. All right, clarification. It is an A7N8X, not a BX. I'm dumb. Um, it says to get dual channel sockets one and three or sockets two and three. So we're gonna do one and three. And I assume socket one is the one closest to the CPU. It better well dang be. Yep, DDR1, DDR2, DDR3. So we're gonna do one and three. Which makes sense to me. Could do two and three, but then the dims will be a little bit closer together. Uh, not that I'm gonna clock the hell out of these dims. I know I was able to get the timings a little tighter on them back in the day. Um, and then maybe get a mild overclock of the whole uh, bus. Can't remember. It's been so long since I've dealt with uh, this particular kind of, or era of build and, and the way that motherboards back then worked. Next, we've got the video card. Uh, if I can remember what I did with my little red screwdriver. Which I can't. Um, okay. under the case. I'm going to remove this little sticker. It says, remove safety tab when using AGP Pro Card. <laughs> it's literally a little piece of plastic that fit into that, that cavity right there, held in by a sticker. Nice. So here we go. This AGP slot, AGP Pro slot, does not have a retention mechanism, which is kind of interesting to me. Um, we need to peel away these guys, two of them, and my camera battery died. So where were we? Putting the video card in. Hopefully it fits. Oh. Does this have some... Oh, it does. This case is trying to be clever, and I'm not a fan of clever. So I've got to remove... this space-saving feature, which is... the retention, screw-wise, falls outside of the case. So you gotta take this guy out. Womp, womp, womp. Okay. Now, the video card. So one thing you might ask is, uh, why wouldn't they, oh, there's a sticker missing. Why wouldn't they have an extra power connector on a, such a beefy video card? Well, that's part of the AGP Pro, I think. 
Is there enough room between the motherboard and the case here? Because it's kind of looking like that's not the case. Oh, oh, we got some purchase. Hey. Yeah. Couple of these. Put this back in. Maybe. He says as he blocks all of the light. Um, and maybe we'll just stick one screw in for a good measure if I can fit it in there. That's what she said. There we go. That'll be fun because I plan on trying to benchmark this uh, Fire GL card with my 9600, uh, which means it'll take at least a whole minute and a half to take out a card, put in the other one. Slightly annoying. What's next? Power supply. Easy. They have both a Molex and the three pin. So I'll probably just, well, there's a two fan headers right here. One, two fan headers. There's a, what looks like a four pin fan header down there. Nope, that's modem. Why would you want a modem? Who am I to judge? Um, and of course, CPU fan has a header up here. Um, but we'll get to that a later date, <clears throat> or at least a later time. Uh, so, does this need the four pin? Do not believe Athlon's needed four pin. Which is good, because this is a six pin. Uh, but it does use, no, it doesn't even use the 24, no. Okay, here's the four pin and a six pin and an 8-pin. Um, it only uses 20-pin uh, whatever. It just clips off somehow. Folds out of the way. I guess it just folds out of the way. Anyway, so it just needs a 20-pin. So I guess that's cool. Um, and all these are not modular. Yeah, I had a feeling this might have been a mistake. <laughs> Lesson learned. I should have put the power supply in first before I put the heat sink on. Because now there's not enough room. Well, shh. Slightly different camera angle. What I had to do was put the power supply in after taking the heat sink off. Well, I put the power supply in and screwed it in, but then I didn't have enough room in between the heat sink and the power supply to get a screwdriver in there to get the retention mechanism clicked down. I might have theoretically been able to flip the bracket around, and then I would have been able to use the screwdriver side on this side, but that's not ideal because the actual pressure, the, the, the little retention bracket is offset. It's like this, so it puts more force on this side which is where the actual core, the center of the CPU is, whereas there's another half inch of socket on this side. So ideally, it's in the way, how it is right now. Because um, if I would have flipped it, then it would have been putting more tension towards the socket side, which there's no, there's less CPU there, and the, the, the pressure wouldn't have necessarily been right on top of the, of the cores. Core, singular. So, now that that's done, I can finally screw that back in again. Whew. Okay, now everything is in there. The... Don't need this. Don't need these. So they're going to have to get much to the back side of the case. But for now, I'm just going to stuff them in there. Part of me probably getting in front of the camera, and like I said earlier, I think uh, I only need 20 pin 
power here. So I guess that little extra just kind of folds out of the way. Works well enough for me. Alright, um, do we want to go ahead and put these on there? I guess, why not? Please get front panel USB going. So here's a little thing that I just found out. I could not find the hard drive LED header on the main block of front panel connections. Uh, and that's because it's not there. It's actually on the side. So if I can get enough light in here, you'll see the bottom right is where all those front panel connections go. And then off to the side and slightly above it is what is labeled IDE LED. So does it give me the polarity? Mm, not really. I'm just gonna plug it in and check the manual again. Search for IDE. We'll see what happens. And it looks like I got it right. Positive is on the bottom. So we're good to go there. Um, what's next? There's really nothing left. Uh, I gotta get my Molex running. Get at least a couple of fans plugged in maybe. Plug in the back fan I guess. And then I think we're ready to boot it. Let's see what happens. All I want to do is get it to post, get to BIOS, and I'll be happy. So, let me get this in and then I'll kind of regroup this whole mess and uh, get some, uh, get a DVI cable plugged into it. We'll see what happens. Alright, it's not the most ideal setup, but we can at least see whoop, when my uh, and I turn this on. We got a green light up there. And as for power, it's on. Switch my monitor over to VGA input. I haven't heard a post beep yet, though. Hmm. Some troubleshooting might be in order. Yeah, I got nothing on there. Hmm. Let me check connections and see if I'm missing something stupid. I was hoping for at least an error beep if there was one. Well, I replaced the Fire GL card with uh, my 9600 and when I first put it in uh, it gave me a long beep to short beep error beep 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 which means problem with the video card again with the Fire GL no beeps but I took it out I put in this Riva TNT 2 uh, no beeps at all Put the 9600 back in, and and well, it did post. <laughs> I swear it did. I wonder if maybe this is a power problem. But I have nothing, like there's no accessory, if you want to call it that. There's no hard drive, there's no optical drive. We are bare bones, one fan, power supply feeding everything, motherboard, two sticks of RAM, which if it, would, if it was RAM as the problem, then I'd get a RAM error beep, and a video card. Which, let's make sure we're seated. Nice in there. Try it again. I don't get it. I just don't get it. 
Okay, I reseated the video card like eight times in a row to power off. We're not even going to plug in the VGA cable or DVI to VGA. Give me it. See? Now we're posting. I plug in DVI. Well, I should probably try VGA first, eh? That might be the key to this particular card. It might not uh, like to uh, do DVI right now for some reason. Still nothing on the monitor, so that's cool. Try it again. Last time on video. Is that a longer beat? Hmm. I don't get it. I'll have to mess around with this and figure it out, and then I'll I'll get back with you guys. So it's got to be power. It's got to be power related. See, turn it on. No. Turn it on. You can see the blue from this fan. It shuts off immediately after post. Whole thing shuts off. Time to find another power supply. Well, I found a couple power supplies. My battery's about to die on the camera. We got this old thing. Can't remember what it came from, but it has a whole 40 amps on the 5 volt rail. Sorry. It's an old silver crappy thing. Let me zoom out um, and focus a little bit here. So I got that, and then there's this OCZ one, a lot newer, and it has 30, 30 amps on the 5 volt rail, so first I'm going to try the old geezer, who knows if it still works, uh, I'm just going to put it on life support, put the, not even put the actual power supply in there, see what we get, fingers crossed. So here's where we're at. Just have this plugged in. All I'm doing is going straight into the motherboard. That's the only thing plugged in. Power, old power supply, into the motherboard. There's no extra 4-pin. I think that's a 12-volt thing, which is weird because my ABIT NF7 over there, the broken one, does have a 4-pin 12-volt. Pretty sure it's 12-volt. Isn't the yellow 12-volt or is that 5-volt? Maybe it's 5-volt. I don't know does have an extra uh, power, CPU power. This does not. Hmm. Anyway, battery's still about to die. If we turn this on, turn this on, we've got the 9600 in there, we get a beep, and we post. Of course, it's saying that we've got a uh, 1500 plus CPU in there, which is incorrect, because I'll probably have to set that all manually, or at least set it correctly, but uh, that's where we're at right now, now, so let's try putting the uh, FireGL in there and see what happens with that, because that's going to draw a lot more power through, through the actual motherboard, so let's do that. Okay, here goes nothing. Oh, turn that on first. This is with the Fire GL. Still no beep. Hmm. That's troubling. But at least we're posting with the 9600. So we're most of the way there. And I'm going to call it today. That's the end of the video. I'm tired. I've been at this for like three hours almost. And filming is annoying, but hey, kind of fun too. So, 
yeah I'm just gonna pack up and uh, next well sometime before next time I will put that power supply in here and we'll just run the 9600 and go from there so anyway appreciate you all hanging out with me today and thanks for watching take it easy